I've always wanted to be in the education sector, so I actually started my career by being a teacher. Uh, I did a degree in special education. I worked with kids who have learning difficulties. I started in the classroom, and then I thought I really wanted to contribute more to education reform and school change, and I thought, you know, what can I do now? Um, and I thought the best way to do it is really to go um, and continue my um, higher degrees. So I went for a master's degree in curriculum development. I worked on curriculum development, on training teachers who are going to be working with kids. Um, later on, I moved on to do my PhD in teacher education. So I also got a broader idea of how we can contribute to education reform. I came back home uh, to Saudi and I realized that I really didn't want to be stuck in the academic sector. I didn't just want to be another academic that uh, writes books or complains basically about education reform because I did write a book when I was a student in 2009 and it was called Khalat al and al Talim Saudi and I thought that's not enough. I really need to be where um, change is happening. I need to be contributing to actual national projects. So I thought, okay, it's the time now to move out from academia to industry. And I thought the best way to do it is to move to management consulting and work really on large scale education project or massive reform projects. So um, I worked with Booz and Company for a while. We worked on different projects on human capital development. It was education, uh, creative industries, how to boost the creative industries for youth. We worked on women empowerment. Um, so different topics that are close to my heart. That was a very good way for me to understand how policy making is being done at the larger level. Um, so I moved later on to government advisory and I, I realized one very important thing. Working at the government level and seeing all these billions spent on education reform and not trickling down to the school given that I was a teacher was really depressing me. So you would see all these billions not really reaching the student at the end or not improving student outcome. So what I said is enough, I'm going to start my own company in Khan Education, where we aim to be the company that works at the school level and at the government level and really bring both together. So make sure that these national projects, that these the money spent and the resources spent on, on education reform are actually reaching the school. And this is what we're doing today. But there are a lot of obstacles, two things actually I would say. Being a woman, uh, you're working in an industry that's mainly male-driven. Um, if you talk about the policy-making elements that are also mainly male-driven, um, so it's really very difficult to establish your credibility as a woman, that's number one. So you really need to work twice as hard as the man, uh, and you need to be maybe more outspoken and more assertive about what you think. And I think that's really important because you see a lot of women in uh, policy making positions, but they're not as assertive and not as outspoken. So it's not just important to make it, but it's really important to say your opinion when you make it. I think that's uh, a key issue. The other one is really being young. So again, um, policy making is mainly driven by um, people uh, who are yeah, maybe a bit slightly older than you. So it's difficult to establish that credibility as a young individual. Um, it could be easier perhaps in, uh, in countries uh, in the West, not like uh, not the GCC. So there's that challenge. But I think a lot of things now are moving to uh, more outcome based. Uh, so, so they look at your achievements, they look at your outcomes. Um, and I think if you're outspoken, I think that makes it easier. But it's still a challenge. My motto in life is uh, that you have to have passion. That's the most important thing. I really believe in something called passion capital. So there's something called human capital and everyone's looking for the right talent. There's uh, financial capital. But what I really believe in is passion capital. So if you have the passion to, because, you know, you're going to face challenges. By default, yani, the education industry is very difficult. But the work with is very difficult. Um, it's uh, especially if you're talking about the GCC. They're facing uh, mainly very similar problems in student outcomes, in teacher quality, um, in uh, school autonomy. So you really need to have that passion to be able to wake up every day and solve these problems. Definitely do what you're passionate 
about doing or work in the area that you're passionate about. That's the most important thing. You're definitely going to find a job. So, I mean, they talk a lot about unemployment, but if you do what you're passionate about, you're definitely going to make it. The second thing is you really need to take risks. And we're not in an age where you just you can just wait for employment or wait for things to happen. You really need to take risks. And I really believe um, in the saying that says jump and find your wings on the way down or jump and build your airplane or you know, assemble your airplane on the way down because there's a sense of urgency and there is that urgency in the GCC. Like, you know, you're going to reach the ground at some point. So you need to be very creative about how you're going to assemble that airplane before um, you reach the ground. And when you feel that sense of urgency and you have the passion to go forward, I think um, you can definitely make it. So I think that's my two cents of advice. First, I'm very proud of women in this region. Very proud because um, we have actually, we have an inverse gender gap. Women are doing much better than uh, men. If you look at uh, education outcomes, international education outcomes, girls outperform boys in math, they outperform boys in science. And if you look at, um, for example, uh, the States and uh, the UK, it's the opposite. Boys outperform girls, except in the GCC, in Oman specifically, for example. Girls are doing really well in education. Their only issue is that they haven't really penetrated the labor market as much as uh, the education sector. Um, I'm really proud of them. Um, that's to start with. I really think that they have a very bright future if um, they continue to ask for their rights, to push on, to uh, voice their opinion, to show that uh, they're there and what they can do. <laughs> Bismillah.